Hello, everybody. Once again, on this very nice and I'm not sure if it's sunny, but definitely a nice afternoon here in Helsinki at the Andritz booth. Today, we are also going to read some other interesting news. Uh, we just talked about green hydrogen, and the next topic is carbon capture. And for that reason, I would like to invite my colleague Klaus Berntaler on stage. Klaus? Big applause for Klaus. <laughs> Similar to the presentation we have heard before with Peter, it's also an internal startup within Andritz, which has been around for three to four years now. And it was one of the technologies where the management board decided that it's really important to move this technology forward. And as you're all aware, carbon capture is a hot topic at the moment for almost everybody who is in the pulp and paper business. And prior to this meeting, I asked Klaus, you know, what would be the best outcome of this presentation? He said, ideally, someone would raise their hand from a pulp in and say, let's go for it, let's give it a try. So if there's someone around here who is running a pulp mill, please come a little bit closer to really listen to the presentation. Klaus, uh, I brought a container here. Uh, it's a bottle, actually, which I just stole from our barista. Does it work with uh, CO2 capture? No, I think it's a pressurized vessel. We could store some CO2 in it, but it's a very small amount. No? It will not really contribute, but it's a showcase. No? We need a lot of these bottles <laughs> to store it. Thank you, Klaus. Maybe you can give us a little bit more insight into okay. this technology. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So, welcome to this presentation. I will talk about carbon capture CO2 removal. The first topic is why are we doing it? There are two answers. One answer is we have to do it. We have to remove CO2 to meet the net zero emission target prognosed by Euro European Union, prognosed by the United Nations to avoid the climate change. But it's not all. There's also a topic, what is shown here. Um, can we make business out of carbon capture, CO2 removal? And our answer is yes, we can. Maybe not now, but maybe in the short future, in the long term future, because just this is one number 11 million tons of biogenic CO2 are used by 2030 in the European Union. Uh, to meet the targets. No? And when we consider where does biogenic CO2 come from, there are not so many sources for that. So just a very simple equation, all the pulp mills globally emit currently about 326 million tons of CO2 per year. And just to replace the uh, fossil fuel, what is currently used for shipping, by renewable sources would require about 690 million tons of CO2. So this means the CO2 from pulp metal is a very valuable source in the future to produce synthetic fuels, what Henrik already introduced and also Peter mentioned, and this we need for a net zero emission target. So what are we doing? This is the slide what already was shown by Henrik. This is shown what Andritz is doing in total. So we are doing everything to produce e-fuels. And our portion is the carbon capture shown in red here. And when you remove the CO2 with a carbon capture plant, you have different possibilities. You can go for sequestration. If it is not biogenic CO2, then to remove it for all the time from the environment, you have to store it underground, or you get, go for, sec, uh, for the production of synthesized fuels, of e-fuels. We are talking here and now about carbon capture, CO2 removal. So what are we doing? In general, we are doing all the work necessary from starting of the elaboration of feasibility and feed studies, so to develop concept for the clients, how to remove the CO2, what is the best system to remove the CO2, and therefore typically uh, we're doing studies, feasibility feed studies. Then we have ready pilot plants, these are mobile pilot plants for our different technologies um, to test it, 
to bring it on a site, to test it, to demonstrate how the process will work. Because every source of the CO2 is a little bit different. If it comes from a bulk mill, the cement plant, the steel plant, you have to keep, take care of that. And then we are realizing this plant, either in a compact size or in a large size. And this we do on an EPC basis, including up to turn key, whatever is required by the clients. This is our scope. This is a flow diagram of our main process. It's chemical absorption. What is shown here is a chemical absorption using m um, Without going too much into details about it, just some highlights about this, about this technology. The first topic is what is shown here as the Condensation scrubber, so first topic is pretreatment is very important. You have to remove all the acidic components, all the fly ash, all the dusts uh, before you go to carbon capture because you have to avoid that the amine solution is degradating. And for that, we have experience of more than 40 years of fluca screening, so we can definitely design the system very well. The next step is then the absorber, it's shown here. It's a quite high absorber where we absorb the CO2 in the flue gas with an amine solution or also with a hot potassium uh, carbonate solution. It's a, a comparable process. It is absorbed in the amine and then it will be desorbed in the desorber at higher temperatures. And then the clean CO2 or let's say the the almost very clean CO2 is released. And this is a recycle process. The, uh, um, so this amine solution is returned. It is now removed the CO2. It's a lean amine solution of a heat exchanger and preheat it up. So, and we develop this technology, we engineer it, and we bring it on site and install it there. What is important to also understand, also this carbon capture is a technology which requires energy. It is shown here, 2.7 gigajoule per ton of CO2 removed. So in other units, these are 750 kilowatt hours uh, per ton of CO2. So quite a high amount of thermal energy needed. And around 150 kilowatt in addition is needed in electric power but also including the liquefaction. So this is a topic which really has to be investigated. And here we're also working on further improvements using other uh, amine solutions to reduce this energy consumption. A similar system, you can work with uh, hot potassium, so it's a salt. Why we're going for two different technologies, each of them has its advantages. Working with hot potassium, you need higher pressures but you will not see any degradation. So degradation means that the amine after some, some, this, some time, it decomposes. You see a little bit in the emission, you have to remove it, you have to renew it. There we have benefits with salty solutions. So all of that we can elaborate in detail when you have interest and give you the best solution for your requirement. After this process step, we have the CO2 available around two to three bar. It is quite clean, up to 99%. But for the further use, you need another treatment. On the one hand side, you have to remove the water because it's coming out from the desorb as a solution of water in CO2. And you have to remove uh, non-condensable gases, oxygen, and nitrogen. And this is done in the stages of compression and liquefaction. And also for this system, different technologies are available. We're working here together with sub-suppliers. We have our own solutions available. So to deliver the CO2 in the quality and um, in the stage you want to use it. You can go for pipeline transport. So there is a big project under development in Europe for installing a CO2 pipeline. There, typically, you need CO2 to be compressed supercritically to 130 degree. You can liquefy it, transport it with trains, with trucks, for further usage to provide e-fuels or for sequestration. 
And for this, we have the right technologies available. I already talked about uh, the energy topic. No? And we realized energy is an important part. Similar as for what Peter already mentioned, green hydrogen, electricity is a big topic. We need a lot of thermal energy for the iming process. We also need electricity. And also for a carbon capture plant, when you have a lifetime consideration, the OPEX costs are the main costs. You can say when you calculate a 20 years lifetime, about 70% of the lifetime costs are based on OPEX costs. 30% are the CAPEX costs. So the main question or one important question is how to realize a carbon capture plant with the optimized OPEX cost. And we call this integration of a carbon capture plant in any industrial usage. If it's a cement plant or a waste to energy plant or a bulb mill. And here we have developed a concept to elaborate on the one hand side which energy source is available. On a bulb mill, quite often steam is available from the recovery boiler. Um, so it should be there, but we also realized, for example, biopsies are, are using the steam for district heating, then maybe just waste energy is available at a lower temperature. And with this in mind, we develop solutions to integrate our carbon capture system into the system. And what does it mean? It goes, for example, for heat pumps. If you have low-grade waste, you can bring it up. It goes for the elaboration of low pressure steam, what you can use so that you end up in an optimized concept. And this, we saw it, it is a very important task, what we are developing. And it's a base case to really realize the system and to also make it economically feasible. And this is, this is one example where we did it for a waste to energy plant, not for a bulb mill, but the waste to energy. And the interesting topic is we compared here two solutions, one using um, the thermal energy directly from the boiler, the other one using a heat pump, using the waste energy. And the outcome is what I already mentioned from the CAPEX cost, a solution with a heat pump is of course more expensive, but from the overall cost over the lifetime, a solution with a heat pump is quite attractive with a payback of eight to 10, six to eight years, I would say. So this heat integration is the main uh, topic for the installation of carbon capture projects. So let me show also one of our references at the end of my presentations. We installed this plant. <clears throat> this is a demonstration plant removing two tons of CO2 per day at the in Rohrdorf, this is a cement plant. Cement has the topic of non-avoidable CO2 emissions coming from the CO2. And this is a full-sized um, amine-based system with a compression up to 80 bars. And this is stored in bottles and it is further treated so that it can also be used for the food, food industry to um, repair any product out of it. This plant is in operation since two years and works quite well. Similar plant we have installed after a, 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 um, after a steel factory in Austria, in Linz. And we are, of course, ready for any future project. So in case of any questions, ideas, concept, partners who are interested, I'm here and be happy to answer this. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Um, once again, since we are now here in Helsinki, and earlier we had a discussion, why does it specifically make sense here in the Nordic region to start a project like this? Yeah. Yeah, I think one topic is what was already mentioned before, energy is quite cheap, it's reasonable here, and energy is also required for the carbon capture plants. The next topic is um, you have a lot of biogenic CO2 emissions, so bulb and paper is a large industry here. There is the source of biogenic CO2 available. What 
is the prerequisite to produce e-fuels. And the third topic is that the fundings are quite attractive. Uh, it is, you see it also that many projects are developing to produce e-fuels and for that biogenic uh, CO2 is required. So I think it's a starting point. We see here also many projects in development stage where we also participate as supplier. Thank you. Okay. So with all these very positive prerequisites, I would like to thank Klaus again for his okay. presentation. As said before, if you've got some other questions, you will be still around until uh, yes. the evening. So thank you very much for joining in and hopefully see you tomorrow again for some other presentations following. Thank you very much. Thank you.